Our next guest may not be a fire-breathing <laughs> dragon, but fail to impress her and that stern stare might burn right through you. And as Dragon's Den prepares to return for its 18th series, investor Deborah Meaden will be accepting nothing but the best. Oh! oh the panic! Oh, oh. Deborah joins us Hi, now. Hi, uh, Lovely to, to talk to you. Thank you for joining us today. Can't wait for it to come back. Love that it's moved to BBC One from BBC Two, which, uh, which is a, a, a new home. For you, when you're... When you're there in, in front of those poor, quivering people, um, what, is it, what is it that annoys you? How, when do you know they just got this wrong? Um, you, so, the, so no, it doesn't annoy me if I think people have made mistakes. What does annoy me is when I think there's a little bit of um, bluffing going on. You know, and sometimes it's like those guys, they were really confident, they were good business people, and then they make a fundamental mistake. I mean, this was an easy question, and I find that a little bit frustrating. Mm, I bet. But listen, you think sort of the business as a whole, really, over the last year has suffered, but you look at what's going on inside the den, and you've had a record-breaking year for pledges and investments there. How come? Well, I think it's, and, and actually, I think it's partly, I think the move to BBC One is bang on because there's a lot of people who've taken the time to think about their lives, think about how they want to work, flexibility, being able to work at home, um, having skills that they could actually probably use in setting up their own business. So I think this year, particularly, it's really, really bought out. Those people have had a business itch and thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And, and I think having a wider audience on BBC One, I hope it's going to inspire a lot of people to do the thing that I love. You know, I love business. I love entrepreneurs. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a great move. Um, yeah. So we know what, we know what um, frustrates you. Uh, what is it with you, if, we were, if someone, if I was coming to pitch something to you, what are the key requirements? What does Deborah Mead need to know? I've got to be able to trust people. I, you know, the den is a really small part of it because we've actually got to work with these people afterwards. So I've got to believe them and trust them. And, and you know, one of my great investments came into the den holding hands with his wife, said, I'm absolutely terrified and I'm terrible with numbers and I'm going to get my numbers wrong. You know, and, and that didn't, had he come in and bluffed, I probably wouldn't have invested. But ha as he came in with a great little product, but, but no idea about the numbers, I kind of thought, you know what, I can work with you. We can do this. So honesty is really important. If you put yourself forward as being a really good business person, then you're going to have to follow that up with your numbers, you know, because you don't have to remember that many numbers. Turnover, gross profit, net profit. You know, that's not that hard. So you've got to be what you present yourself as, as far as I'm concerned. And what about if um, somebody comes in with a very emotional pitch? How do you deal with something? I mean, because it's quite hard. I mean, I'd find this to sort of separate business and emotions. I imagine that's something you have to get quite good at, is it? Well, you do, because a business has to make money. You know, we're not, there's a place for charity and there's a place for business. Um, and people who come, and it does get emotional, you know, and of course I feel it, but I'm, but I, I'm making an investment. And if I make an investment based on emotion, it's going to go wrong later. The business still isn't going to work, but it, but so I have to be able to, I have learned that, um, to, you know, to kind of control those, those. I do a little bit with my heart. Sometimes I think, Actually, this has got this has got legs. It might not be the busy, biggest business in the world, but we can make this work. But I won't invest in a business that I know won't work just because I feel sorry for people. Mm. I think that actually can be a little bit patronising. Also, um, making telly in these times is not the easiest thing to do. But I, I assume that you you must have had a reasonably easy time of it because you're already separated mm. anyway. Yeah, good point. We actually, um, we're probably about four feet apart, so we moved a little bit further apart. Um, the big difference was that, of course, the entrepreneurs couldn't show us their product, so we had a little box beside us, which I rather liked. I rather hope they keep it, because it was like opening, you know, Christmas every day. It was, oh, what's in the box? So, we, so the products would sit in the box, and when the entrepreneur had finished their pitch, they'd say, you know, open the box and look inside. So I think it worked really well, actually, and, and you know, as I say, I kind of hope they keep the box. Yeah, it was quite nice to have a good old rummage in there. This is going to be the last series for one of your dragons, though. Tej is moving on. He is moving on, yeah. And he's, do you know, I miss him because the bit, you know, the bit you don't see, we sit all day together, you know, and, and Tej and I giggle an awful lot. You know, there's times when we've actually lost it. Um, I will really miss Tej, but more, you know, he's got a different, he's always got a different take. 
it's quite difficult when there's five of you sitting in a chair to look at all the different angles, you know, to come up with something new if you're the last person to say anything. Tasia's always got a new angle, so yeah, I'll miss him. And, and what about you? Uh, how have you dealt with uh, lockdown? Where have you found sanctuary and solace? Well, I've been in Somerset. I feel very lucky, you know, I've got I've got space, I've got animals that need feeding and actually having to have jobs, you know, having to get up and feed the animals three times a day. And it kind of puts a rhythm into your life. So I've been I've been very lucky. Um, but I think, you know, it's time now. I, I, I also feel lucky because I've got, you know, 19 businesses that I'm currently invested in. So I've, I've, I've had a lot of communication outside of my walls. You know, I've had a lot to do and a lot of different people to speak to and challenging things. And oddly, I like a challenge, you know, so so it's been, it's, you know, it's, it's had its moments for me, but I am ready. I think we all are, you know, I'm ready just to be in front of people. I, I, I was on the Graham Norton show on, 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 um, on Friday night and I just felt like, oh, this is the first time I've been out in ages. I really, really miss this. But despite having sort of 19 businesses like that that you're invested in at the moment, you do stay grounded and quite literally because you have this morning ritual of putting your feet onto the ground. I do. I do. Do you know what? Having animals is fantastic because they really don't care who you are or what you do. Um, but I sometimes feel, actually, it goes back to your previous guest. I sometimes feel we rush through life and we kind of don't connect with the earth anymore. And, and it's just my connection to the world. You know, I put my feet on the ground. I don't care whether it's sunny, snowy, rainy, whatever it is. I put my feet on the ground and I literally touch the earth. You know, and, I, and there's just something about that for me. It just reminds you of what's really important in life. And when you were on the Graham Norton show, you weren't wearing anything new. Oh, I wasn't, and I'm not. I'm actually, this is in honour of you. I'm wearing my Dragon's Den outfit, but I haven't bought anything new. My, my, okay, this is really glamorous. For my birthday, my husband bought me a pair of socks, um, which is the first thing in 15 months that I bought new. God, good for you. And you're doing if this If you were because... a house health, you'd be free. <laughs> <laughs> I love that your head went there. <laughs> That's brilliant. But all of this is because, you know, we live with the way that we buy stuff. We sort of buy where it wants and chuck it. And you want to do your bit from the environment rather than just saying, yes, we're environmental. And you wanted to put your money where your mouth is and live like this. Well, absolutely. I don't think you can you can feel passionate and talk about something and not behave like it. And and I thought, you know, listen, I talk about it, but I've, I've got to change my own behaviour. Do you know the really weird thing now? I'm finding it really difficult to buy the first thing. It's like, no, but I've got 15 months of not buying anything. I kind of don't want to break my records. So, um, so I don't know why I'm going to buy stuff. But I've also had a good old clear out of the wardrobe. Anything that hasn't been used, I think, actually, get that out of the wardrobe, get that on somebody else's back. You know, either get it into a charity shop or find somewhere else at some... Or swapsies. You know, I do swapsies with friends. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, well no, done, it's, you. Uh, it's really lovely good. to talk to you. Uh, best of luck with the new series. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Deborah. And it is Dragon's Den. It's Thursday at 8 on BBC, BBC One. One. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.